Good afternoon folks. Welcome to a uh, National 5 Chemistry again. Um, and today we're going to be tackling this new homologous series, the alcohols. This is covering Scholar's page, uh, sorry, it's QAs, page 51 to 53. And if you're using the Scholar PDFs, page 82 to 92. This is a brand new homologous series. Let me introduce you to the simplest member of the series. One carbon, three hydrogens here, and an oxygen, and then another hydrogen. It's almost like methane, uh, where you have inserted an oxygen between the carbon and the hydrogen. And it's got a name, and it's called methanol. It's called meth, because it's only got one carbon. It's called an, because there's only single bonds. And it's all, because it's a member of this alcohol family. How do you recognise them? Because they have got this O and an H attached to a carbon. Um, the name for this, we usually, by the way, we all frequently shorten it down to just OH, but don't forget there is a bond in there, as you can see. Uh, the name for this particular group is called the hydroxyl group. You might want to pause the video and tell me why it's different to the hydroxide. Hydrox, <laughs> so I'm writing hydrox. Oh, dear, dear, sorry. Hydroxyl. So it's the hydroxyl group. You might want to pause the video and tell me why it's different to the hydroxide. I'm hoping the answer you give me is because this is a molecule, part of an organic molecule, and O hydroxide is OH minus. That is a negatively charged ion formed in metal hydroxides. Here is a much larger member of the same homologous series. Um, this one has got one, two, three, four carbons in it. You might want to pause the video and see if you could name this molecule for me, or at least you think you can name it. We'll have a look later on at why uh, naming. Uh, we have to change our approach to naming. We'll have a look at that in the representation. I'm hoping you came up with a butanol. One, two, three, four is but, and it ends, it's got a hydroxyl, so it is butanol. Um, so uh, let's have a look at how you represent uh, these molecules on paper. I apologise for the mess here. This is the second time I'm doing this video. I didn't really fancy doing it a third time. So let's have a look at this for a second. We have got ethanol. This is what's called a full structural formula. Propanol's full structural formula. In darker blue here, I've got what's called a shortened structural formula. So CH3, CH2, CH2OH. We can have the shortened version of this, which is CH3 uh, and then CH2OH. Or you can have the molecular formula. That's assuming I can do it correctly, of course, in red, which is C2H5OH. This one here is C3H7OH. So three different representations. Um, quite different to, of course, reality, please remember. Uh, it's quite important to note that although I put the OH on the end here, that's just by habit, there is no end. It could be the top or the bottom or there because it's the same thing. These, This is just a two-dimensional representation of this in reality. Please remember that. Um, naming. I don't I don't know if you've realised or not. You might have spotted the brighter amongst you. I'm always putting on the end. Do I have to put the hydroxyl on the end? No. No, I don't. The hydroxyl could quite happily sit in the middle, which means I can have these two molecules and they are both propanol. But as you can quite simply see, they are not identical molecules. And I'm hoping you can pause the screen and shout at me what the technical definition of uh, different structures with the same molecular formula are. Because these two guys are isomers within the same family. Now, it's, no, it's definitely not enough to call them both propanol. So how do we name them? The good news is, we use a set of rules very similar to that of the alkenes. Um, the first rule was find the longest straight chain of carbons that contains your functional group. That's your basic skeleton. Number from the end nearest the functional group. And this is the, uh, the OH, the hydroxyl. So we would number from, well, we have to number from here, obviously. So one. And this one here, we can number from either end. It's the same thing. So let's number from here too. Now, how do we show the reader where the hydroxyl group is? And we break it down into this, folks. This is prop an, 
and then we insert the number just before the all because it's a member of the alcohol family. So this is propan 1 all, and this is propan, hopefully you can tell me, 2 all. So these are isomers, guys, within the same homologous series. The SQA wants you to know ethanol, propanol, all the way down to octanol. You have to be able to instantly recognize the name, the full short structural formula, the shortened structural formula, or the molecular formula. Two things just before we leave this sheet. I'm wondering if you can tell me what the general formula for this is, because this is a homologous series after all. But before we get to that, I would like to remind you about something I forgot to mention before, I think, which is in the shortened structural formula, if you have lots of CH2s in the middle, like you would with octanol, you can bundle them together. And I have seen representations like this. So octan, let's do oct, let's do it properly. Octan 1 all. Um, could you say methan 1 all? Yes, you could. You can't get anything else except methan 1 all. It's the same with ethan 1 all. You can't have ethan 2 all. I wonder if you could tell me why. But there's nothing wrong with getting in the habit of always putting the number before the all. Um, we could show it as CH3 at one end, CH2OH at the other end, and what you could do is take the six carbons in the centre, the six CH2s, and just bundle them together like that. That is also the shortened structural formula of octanol. A, a couple of words on the fact that it's a homologous series now. Now, the SQA want to remind you that because it is a homologous series, the number of carbons in the molecule affect the melting points and the boiling points. Uh, and they actually go sort of up like that-ish. Um, the SQA want you to realise that there is a force of attraction between this butanol molecule and its neighbouring butanol molecule. And that force is what you break when you boil them, because they all fly off individually, separately to each other. Now, the more carbons you have, um, the SQA wants you to realise that the stronger these forces are, and that is why the boiling points increase as your molecules become larger. Because of the strength of these forces. These mysterious forces come back at higher, and we'll tell you more about them. So there's mysterious forces holding uh, each alcohol molecule to its neighbour molecule. And the more carbons you have, the stronger these forces are. The SQA also want you to know, for some slightly odd reason, that methanol, ethanol, uh, propanol, either propan 1 ol or propan 2 ol by the way, are all very soluble in water. So they want you to know that they mix with uh, water quite happily. They say butanol as well. I'm not convinced. I need to go and look up the figures on butanol. But they certainly want you to realise that the small alcohol molecules mix quite happily with water. Once you get up to about five or six carbons, definitely not. They don't mix after that. Um, anything else? Excuse me for a second. I think that it takes us to properties and uses. So what do we use alcohols for in the real world? Um, they are used for two main purposes. They're used as solvents. In fact, I think these pens might actually have alcohol in them. Yes, they do. So they're used as solvents for dissolving things. I've got a litre bottle of propan tool kicking about the house because it is so good for sticking, taking off sticky label residue from things. And number two, um, they are used as fuels. Uh, this is a potential problem-solving question, so I'm going to hit you with it just now. If I burn propane, then I often get a slightly yellow flame, which indicates that the combustion is not complete combustion. I'm probably getting carbon monoxide instead of carbon dioxide. However, if I was comp to compare that to a propan one all, I would find the propan one all burned with a much more blue and therefore complete combustion flame. I wonder if you could tell me why. I'm hoping you can see that propan all, propan one all, carries some of its own oxygen along with it, which is required to burn it. This is dependent only on the oxygen in the air. So that's why alcohols as fuels always burn more efficiently than alkanes, in fact. And I think that's us done on alcohols. Um, thanks for listening. We'll get back to you in the next video. Bye-bye.